that was the wild and woolly scene. That, by the way, was Bert Lancaster in the scene from the new United Artists Western Apache. Now, he had a pistol in one hand and a rifle in the other, but the question is, which one was he firing? Well, he was firing with a pistol, which he held in his right hand, and if you know that, then you know how we play Bank on the Stars. Yes, it's Bank on the Stars, where tonight you'll see Johnny Dark, starring Tony Curtis and Piper Laurie. Mr. Hulot's Holiday, starring Jacques Tetty. The Kane Mutiny, starring Humphrey Bogart, Jose Ferrer, Van Johnson, and Fred McMurray. And here in person is that bright young comedy star who just flew in from Hollywood, Bill Cullen. Ah, well, thank you all ever so much and welcome to our program. Hey, wasn't that wasn't there plenty of action in that scene from the new United Artists Western Apache stars Burt Lancaster and Gene Peters? Burt Lancaster really does a great job in the picture, and I know you're going to enjoy it. Well, we're going to have more exciting scenes just like that one you saw, and then I'm going to ask our contestants three questions based on the picture they've just seen. So right now, Cynthia, let's say we meet our first contestant. You're looking well. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. First contestant we have is Mrs. Joyce Collins from Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and Mr. John Rosen from London, England. Oh, welcome to both of you. You come Thank right you. over here and stand next to me, Joyce. My goodness, don't let's, uh, here, put your pocketbook up on my knee there. That's, uh, and, uh, uh, your name, sir, I haven't paid much attention to you. John? John Rosen. Oh, Joyce Collins and John Rosen, and I see here that you're from 11 Godolphin Road, London, West 12, England. Yep, my sir. goodness, that's a complete address. Your home is in London, is John? That's correct. Uh, and your home, Joyce, is in Atlanta? Well, we say Atlanta. Actually, it's Smyrna. Actually, it's what? Smyrna. Smyrna? Uh-huh. Why do you, if, if, you, if it's Smyrna, why do you say it, it's, it's Atlanta? Well, Smyrna's just a little town outside of Atlanta. Oh, so you figure it's perfectly all right. Well, that's true, too. I tell everyone I'm from Pittsburgh. Uh, I say I'm from Pittsburgh. Actually, I was born in a little town south of Pittsburgh called New Orleans. But, uh, <laughs> you know, miss is as good as 575 miles any day in a week. Uh, how long have you, uh, how long have you been over here, John? Oh, just a short while. Oh, you have a good, uh, uh, how much longer are you going to stay with us? Well, perhaps for another 10 days. Only 10 days, old fellow? Well, perhaps a fortnight. A fortnight? Oh, that's good. I think you should stay a fortnight because, what's a fortnight? A fortnight is uh, the term that we use for two weeks. Oh, you say fortnight over there instead of two weeks, huh? Frequently, yes. Like if they're going to fire you, they give you a fortnight's notice. They can do that. <laughs> well, you don't fire anyone in England. You sack them, don't you? Yes, you do that. I had a girl once who should have been sacked. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that another story? But I won't tell you. Um, actually, you started out being here for 10 days. Now it's two weeks or a fortnight. Uh, you sound like a aunt who came to our house once for a summer vacation. She started in just dropping into the house, you know, on her way shopping. I don't know how long she stayed. As a matter of fact, she's still there. Uh, what are you doing here, uh, young lady? Well, my father's a time trust in a TCA, and he's been up on a convention. Your father's a retiring president of TPA? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd love to see one of those TPA conventions, because they all get in their native dress, you know, and to the strum of guitar, they hula all over the place, and it's more fun with a luau on the poi going. Isn't that how it works there? Well, not quite. Oh. You see, TPA is, uh, stands for Travis Protectors Association. They aren't very wise. <laughs> not even on a convention? I mean, no. a Travis Protective Agency, they don't let their hair down on a convention? Well, not down too far. <laughs> Just down to their ankles, but they were shorter then. Uh, I want to ask you, how, uh, how'd you get over here, uh, by the way, John, old boy? Well, by ship. You know, good. <laughs> There's only two other ways. One's the airplane, and the other way, you're going to get terribly wet. Uh, what impressed you about our, uh, our United States? Stateside. Well, uh, I was very impressed uh, by a ride in your subway at uh, peak hour time. Ride in our subway at the peak hour time? Yes. That'll impress you. It'll crush you to a crisp. <laughs> Have you ever ridden our subway at the peak hour time? Yes, I took that trip, too. Same time he was on? Same time. I can see the impression of his monocle on your forehead. <laughs> oh, your husband watching? Uh, well, I hope so. <laughs> Turn your eyes, you dog. <laughs> All right, I tell you what I have to do. I have to get right into, the, I have to get right into your questions because time sort of ran out of me. You two were all ready for a bit of a question? First of all, I'm going to tell you how we play Bank on the Stars. You see, we show you top stars in exciting scenes from the very latest motion pictures. Then we ask you three questions based on what you've just seen. You can win up to $150 and also get a crack at our great big bank night bonus, which tonight stands at uh, $250. Now, the way I do, I ask a question of each one of you in turn. You each one get a separate chance. If you're both right, you win 50 bucks. If only one of you is correct, you get 25. And if neither of you are correct, you, uh, you don't win a farthing. 
Is that good? That's very good. Farthing? Very good. All right, suppose we get to the first one. Now, both of you get ready. I want you, I want you to watch a scene from the new Universal International Technicolor picture, Johnny Dark, which stars Tony Curtis and Piper Laurie and Don Taylor. So now, watch and listen carefully. <laughs> these mountain curves like you're on a merry-go-round, you'll wind up over a cliff. Okay, Major, consider me brief. Now I'm gonna brief you. You've been goofing off long enough. From now on, you're on your own. <laughs> okay, Junior. War, huh? Yeah, a brand new one. All drivers into their cars. All drivers into their cars. Don't forget about our date, please. Join us when you get in, Junior. start is the Tiger Special, and folks, I wish you could see her. As bleak as the animal she was named for, an entry of Cannon Motors. Pretty exciting. That was Tony Curtis, Piper Lowry, and Don Taylor in the new Universal International Technicolor picture, Johnny Dark. You can see it's a picture of plenty of action. And the way that guy says first turn left and then right, sounds like a wife, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> too bad they don't have back seats in those races. Oh, uh, back to the question. Uh, are you ready first for your question, sir? I'm ready. All right, now I'm going to ask you this bit of a question, and if you can answer it correctly, oodles of pound sterling for you. Now, the first car to start in that race was the Tiger Special. I hope you remember that. What was the name of Tony Curtis's car, the one which started second? Tony Curtis's car. What do you say the name was, sir? Have five seconds. Take a guess. Okay. Racer Special. Racer Special. What do you say it was, ma'am? I don't Choice. know unless it's that. You don't know unless it's that? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you were right in the fact you said you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> beyond that, we didn't have much of a score. Uh, I'm sorry, both of you were wrong. It was the Idaho Special. You know, the baked potato bit. And that car ended up looking like one, too. But neither of you scored on that one, so uh, we stand at zero uh, earned right now. Let's see if we can't get back in. Shall we, Josh? Yes, oh, uh, ooh, you're a cute one. <laughs> uh, why don't you go away, you old husband? Uh, oh, uh, question for you. Tony Curtis, Tony Curtis called his relief driver by name just before their car went into a spin. Now, he was the fellow Tony was called driver. Now, what was his name? Hmm? What's his name? Have any idea? Fred? Fred, what do you say, John? Hello, John. <laughs> I was just trying to think of it, you know. Are you uh, there? Why, Bill? Uh, Chuck. Chuck? Uh, no, that isn't. <laughs> you two have a perfect score so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was Smitty, a good old American name. Now, uh, the sp uh, here, you're first this time now, John. The speedometer of Tony, uh, Tony, of Tony Curtis's car was in plain view at one point in that scene. How fast did it indicate he was going? John? Approximately 130. 130? What do you say? You saw a hundred? hundred and what? Ten. Ten? <laughs> Marvelous! It was a hundred and ten, and you just won yourself twenty-five dollars between the two of you. I'm glad you won two of the last minute. Tell you what. I cheated. I hope your husband wasn't watching. Go away. Uh, I want to thank both of you for being with us. You won $25 and stick around because you might have a crack at our bank night bonus tonight. Stand for $250. Meantime, thanks to the two of you for helping us play Bank on the Stars. <laughs> Roger Price okay. from 8 o'clock Monday night. Well, thank you, Cynthia. Hi, Rod. Bill, good to see you. Good to see you. I think the last time we did a show together was about 4 o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? Yeah. Ooh, that night. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, uh, what's this 8 o'clock uh, Monday night you're telling me about? Oh, finally, I got a show of my own going on NBC. 
At 8 o'clock next Monday. It'll be released, seen in New York City only at 8 o'clock on Tuesday. Oh, New York City only Tuesday, uh -huh. but the rest of the whole country, 8 o'clock on Monday. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's a show about what they call drools, which oh. are little drawings that make a complete picture using as few as possible lines. I know, and I love them, and I'm a fan of them. Give me one. Well, uh, say, this, this, of course, is a classic as this, because the basic, that's a picture of a, of a pig going around the barn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess it is. Uh, <laughs> well, what else, Rod? You try one. You make a, make a complete picture, gives you a new way of looking at something. On yeah, the, on I the show, incidentally, we have uh, Denise Darcell, Mark Connolly, and Carl Reiner, and Denise Lord. Uh, Miss, Miss Darcell, the baba ba ba boom You got Denise Darcell? Say, that is a new way of looking at something. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait, but here, uh, I'll do one for you, because I happen to, uh, I happen to, actually, I happen to prepare for this. That's the name of our show. Stars on the Bank. <laughs> <laughs> you do one. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Uh, sure, okay. All right. Uh, well, do one, that's something to do with movies. Movie? Uh, oh, uh, Bill, let's see if right. you can get it here. This is a, a pretty obvious uh, movie doodle, I think, here. Movie doodle. Oh, I know that. A uh, movie doodle, that's a, a fire hydrant on cinemascope. Ooh. Hey, that's good. <laughs> Well, actually, in this way it could be, but, but what it really is, is a new sports car, old garage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's fine. And listen, I want to remind the folks before you go, it's going to be 8 o'clock Monday night on the network and Tuesday night here in New York. That's right. Yeah. Rod, the very best of luck to you in your new show, Droodle. And I'm going to be one of the boys there watching. Thank you. Let's give him a big hand. Rod, Rod. That man is one of my favorite people of all time. I mean that. He, yes, Cynthia? No, you're one of my other favorite people. Oh, gee, you're one of mine. <laughs> well, Everybody go home. Oh. At any rate, this is Anne Marie Bernard from Paris, France, and Mr. Edward Schmidt from New York State. Well, uh, merci, merci, Cynthia. <laughs> merci, how do you do? <laughs> my goodness, you got people in Paris, France, London, England, uh, just about all over the place. Where are you from, by the way, Ed? Uh, Chickawaga, New York. Ye yeah, we got people from all over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, might, you don't mind if I talk to Ann first, do you? Well, that'd be a lot of fun. I yeah, well, I, I would talk to you, but I can't spell it, dang it. I can't even say it, uh, but whatever it is. Uh, something I've always wanted to ask a young lady who's over here from Paris, France, I mean, who's left the land of the Eiffel Tower and the Rue de la Paix, and has finally come to New York, the land of opportunity and skyscrapers and industry, is the question about, what's your phone number? What case is any cat down and reach Huh? Of course, there's any cat, cat, and cheese. <laughs> if I ever pick up the phone and someone says that to me, I'll hang up on him. <laughs> then cat, bark, rack, and rag, wriggle, huh? Yes, sir. And if a man answers, sprinkle, diggle. Uh, are you married? No. Uh, engaged? No. Well, I'll do. Going steady? What means steady? <laughs> what means steady? Yes. Well, what means steady? It means you're just going with one man. Oh, no, that would be a waste of time. <laughs> I want you folks to w welcome you to the air conditioning show. Uh, well, actually, if you'd like to go with more than one man, I'd like to put in an I'd like to tender my application as one of your suitors. <laughs> and I have one of the tenderest applications in uh, this side of the butcher shop. So, um, how would you say American men compare with La Belle Francaise? Whatever that means. Oh, I like American men, yes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there is two kinds of men. Yeah, I I'd rather not mention it, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Huh? I'm sorry. Oh, my, yes. There is a one who goes too fast. One goes too fast. And there is a one who does not go at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safer with mine than you were with yours. Uh, there are those who have convertibles and those who do not have convertibles. I, uh, I imagine that's... Listen, I would like to carry this conversation on in Finetum. That's a little street right off the Rue de la Thing there. <laughs> but because, because time, how do you say time in France? Don't. Huh? Don't. 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 Not exactly. That means fish. Don't. Don't is a fish. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We've run out of fish, and we have to run along on this program. I, I want to talk to you a lot more, Ed, but I guess I have not time. But you understand why I talk to the lady there. Oh, what are you doing in New York, by the way? Oh, I'm preparing for the bar. Show. You're preparing for the after the show. I'll go with you. Listen, <laughs> there's no reason. No reason why a fellow on Saturday night should blow the whole bit. Now, I shouldn't even talk anymore. I should get into the first question, so I better do that. You two all ready to see something? Yes. All right, now, we're going to... We have a scene for you from the delightful French comedy... Oh, French comedy. And Monsieur Hulot's Holiday. Did I do that right? And it stars... It recently won by the way the grand prize at the International Film uh, Critics at Cannes. Did I say that right? Yes. Oh, I'm doing so well. All right, <laughs> let's all get together and watch and listen carefully. Hmm? Your 
cannot see. I've got nothing. Your trick? That man. Why don't you play? What the relationship between man and woman is one in which the psychic and psychological forces seem to thrive on the highest plane. The thought processes in themselves create an idyllic state in which they can ascend to heights unknown to the lesser fleet. All of these moments, for they can only be momentary, will happen at first only rarely. Nonetheless, he or she who attains such a state will forever be dissatisfied with a mere physical relationship. Although that is not altogether ruled out, and we should not spurn it altogether, I mean, even when we see this will show it. Good night. Hilo, that was very sweet of you. Say thank you, Robert. That's a good boy. Good night. Doctor is right. Oh, no, put them get on me. Hi, and sincerely, that was, by the way, Jacques Tati. Uh, the new, in the new French comedy, Mr. Hulot's Holiday, which just made its American premiere, as a matter of fact, at the Fine Arts Theater here in New York. It's unusually amusing, in, in which Mr. Tati is the writer, director, and star. Did you enjoy that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Here comes the first question. You, I'm going to ask you first, Ed, old boy. There were two glasses on the table where the two men were playing cards in that scene. How many glasses were on the table where the four people were playing? You're first, Ed. How many glasses were on the table? One. You say one. What do you say? No, two. Two? Yes. How do you say you right in that. French? <laughs> huh? De. 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 Is that the way you say right? De. No, how do you say right? Correct. De. You're, you're very diverse, whatever that is. You are right, <laughs> and you have $25 to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here's the next one. You're going to be first in this one. There's a little boy who was playing ping pong. In French, that's uh, still ping pong. Uh, and Jacques Tati uh, was uh, called by name after that game. The little boy who played ping pong with Mr. Tati was called by name. What was his name? What would you say? Robert. 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 You say Robert. <laughs> now, wait a Robert. minute. We have a difference. We have one Robert and one Robert. Robert. Uh, huh? You say Robert. You say Robert. <laughs> You're both right anyway. You got $50 dollar or dollars. That's the first time I got two different answers, and they were both the same. Your first this time, Ed, was Jacques Tati smoking a cigarette during that scene? Yes or no? Was he smoking a cigarette during that scene? Your first, Ed. No. You say no, no. And you? I'm agree with him. You what? I'm agree with him. I wish you'd agree with me, because that would be... <laughs> I'm glad you did, though, because you were both absolutely correct. That's oh, good. That's a hundred and a quarter for you. Good. <laughs> You, uh, you have, if memory serves me correctly, $125 to your credit, and this might give you a crack at our great big bank night bonus at the end of the show worth $250. Meantime, thanks a lot to the two of you for helping Thank us play Bank on the Thank Stars. You. Hey, we got... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Dale from High Point, North Carolina. Well, Mr. and Mrs. You are Mrs. Dale, I presume. Mm -hmm. I'm sharp that way. Come on right over here. Uh, this is Ann and Dick Dale. Is that right? That's right. Uh, well, how are you tonight, Ann? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, good. How are you, Dick? Oh, I'm nervous. He, <laughs> is it the, the television program or just being married to Ann that makes you that way? I guess Both. it's the program. <laughs> well, he's at least gallant and you're truthful. What brings you here tonight? Well, we're in New York this summer. Good. I'm, I figured you were. Well, uh, well, we visited Ann and Ollie, and, and they told us to, to about this show, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Pat and Bob told That's us about it, too, and when we got up here, Miss Cam told us about it. And Miss Cam says Ann and Ollie and Ellie. Miss Cam <laughs> says Ann and Nettie and Ellie and Tommy visiting right now, and so here we are. Welcome to We the People. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing they all got their messages straight. It would end up on howdy duty here. Well, Ann and Ollie, if you're watching, I don't know. Uh, what's your job, Dick? I'm a college professor. Uh-huh. What, uh, what field? Business. Business courses. Uh -huh. I teach uh, accounting, income tax accounting. Oh, that's business good. Business law, trade relations, things like that. Trade relations? Yeah. I have a couple of relations I'd like to trade. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a mother-in-law and three cousins for a good first baseman and 20 feet of brass pipe. Isn't that? 
Matter of fact, to get the brass pipe. Uh, I'll tell you what I better do. I, I better get hopping uh, into this particular question right now, if I may do that. You all ready? I'm ready. All right, get ready, because we have a scene. We have a scene from a picture, which is one of the big events of the whole year. It's Columbia's Technicolor film, the Pulitzer Prize novel, The Cane Mutiny. It stars, as the young lady who just left here would say, Humphrey Bogart, Jose Ferrer, and Van Johnson. Also has Fred McMurray and introduces very lovely May Wynn. So now, let's all watch and listen carefully, huh? Captain, the following sea is brutal. We need more knots to outrun it. Race to engine control. This is the captain speaking. You down there in the engine room, I want power. Power on the starboard engine, do you hear? Emergency flank power. You want the ship to go down, we're in a typhoon. Close that door, a dog it. Up the arm, relieve the watch. Pass the word to put on life jackets. It's difficult holding her, sir. The wheel feels loose. Captain, I don't know whether we can keep on riding without turn to the wind. Those are fleet orders, Mr. Merrick. I still think the depth charges should be put on safe. Sir, the depth charges are on safe. Mr. Keeper gave me orders to set them. Why wasn't I told these things? I can't go steaming around with a lot of depth charges. Sir, I told Mr. Keeper. You speak when you're spoken to. Mr. Keeper, put this man on the board for insolence and neglect of duty. Man, get another helmsman. Keep that idiot face out of my sight. But Bill Wells, our best man. Will you stop this back talk? Isn't there one officer on this ship that pays attention to my orders? Number one, switch for it. Short it out by salt water. Shift it to number two. We're falling off the starboard now, sir. That was Humphrey Bogart and Van Johnson, by the way, and it seems from the great new Columbia picture, The Cane Mutiny, which was produced by Stanley Kramer. It's opening soon, and I, I hope all of you will get to see it because it really is a very fine, a truly great picture. Incidentally, here's a bit of a surprise. Beautiful Nan Wynn, who plays the leading role in the picture, is here with us. Take a bow. There she is. <laughs> Miss May Wynn, ladies and gentlemen, who plays the leading feminine role. May, it's awfully nice to see you here, and thank you, May, for coming by. Well, now, don't forget, we've got to get into these questions for you now. Here we go. We're going to ask you first, sir. Are you all ready? Yes, uh, Humphrey Bogart was called by his title in that scene. What was his rank? Captain. What do you say? Captain. You're both right. Fifty dollars, and that's moving in the right direction. <laughs> all right? In that scene, in that scene, Humphrey Bogart was wearing a life jacket. Was Van Johnson also wearing one? What do you say? You're first this time. No. You say no. What do you say, sir? I think that you are. You're, you're right, and your your wife is wrong. It is now up to seventy-five dollars. Good going. Now let's see how well you do. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart told Merrick the fleet course. How many degrees was it? The fleet course. How many degrees? Two forty. Two forty. You say. What do you say? 
240. 240? No, you missed by 60 degrees, which is pretty cold. Uh, it was 180 degrees, the fleet course. Well, you did all right. You did some fine winning. As, uh, as I recall, you won $75 thus far in tonight's program. Stick around. You might have a package bank night bonus worth 250 And thanks a lot to both of you for helping us play Bank on the Star. Thank you. <laughs> time for our bank night bonus tonight worth two hundred and fifty dollars who are our top winners since y'all our second couple oh Ms. boy bernard and mr schmidt miss bernard and mr schmidt welcome <laughs> happy to have the two of you here oh boy congratulations and i'll tell you real fast how our bank night bonus works we're going to present we're going to present a famous star from a great new picture and uh, however this time while our studio and viewing audience are going to be able to see the picture you are only going to be able to hear it you see you won't be able to look at it you just hear it uh, now, in the scene, we have an equally famous actress and actor. Now, the question we're going to ask you, what is the name of the Academy Award winning actress in this scene? It's up to you to identify this noted actress, the lady, from her voice alone. Now, you turn around, face away from the screen. Remember, you get one answer between you. Uh, turn right that way, face that way, away from the screen. And don't turn around, because if you do, oh, I'll be terribly put out. Uh, one answer between you. Light, please. Here we go. Would I have done what I did that day? Let you ask me to a cafe and buy me a coffee. Several coffees. Three hours. Why did you come with me? <laughs> you didn't look very wicked. I'm not an imaginative woman. I Who's you? Who's Rome? And I'm a housewife from Philadelphia. All right, that was a real exciting scene. Now turn around, face me, and remember that anything you say will be held against you. You get only one answer. Have you agreed on an answer, That's for sir? The actress? Uh, for the actress alone. Yes. Have you have you agreed? Yes. You're both in agreement? Mm -hmm. I remember anyone who has anything to say, speak now or forever hold your peace. Donna Reed. Hey, you say what? Donna Reed. I am sorry it is not Donna Reed. It is Jennifer Jones. Jennifer Jones with Montgomery Clift in a scene from that new Columbia picture, Indiscretion of an American Wife. It was produced by David O. Selznick and directed by Victoria De Sica. It's really a wonderful picture. Was Donna Reed your idea? Well, I thought she won the Academy Award this year. Oh, I, yes, right. No, I think I won this year. <laughs> Merci, I mean what? <laughs> well, I've been called that before. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, we, we sincerely hope you enjoy it. Let me see, what'd you win all together? Do you recall? Huh? You know what you've won so far? 125. Yeah, you missed out on the jackpot, but I'll tell you what. We're going to add the $250 to next week's jackpot. Meantime, thanks a lot to both of you ever so much for being with us. We'll see you um, we'll, next week. We're going to have a lot of exciting scenes. We're going to have some very interesting contestants, and our bank night bonus is going to be worth $500 in all. Means, meantime, thanks ever so much to lovely May Wynn and to Roger Price. Till next week, same time, same channel, this is Bill Collins saying thanks for watching, and so long. Wave to the people. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.